Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna to be talking all about how to test a 70 volt system. So the first thing is, anytime you are making any connections on an amplifier, you wanna make sure that's turned off. Then from there, we wanna double check that all of our connections look good visually. Uh, we want to make sure the power cable is pushed all the way in. We want to look at the back of the amplifier, make sure our screws are tightened down good, that our wire is in place. Um, we don't have any uh, frayed wires going off to any of the other terminals or anything like that. Uh, we want to make sure if we used uh, spade connections or anything like that, that they're firmly in place and that nothing looks, looks crazy there. We also want to make sure um, when we have the chance that we visually inspect our speaker connections, make sure that they're uh, tightened in tight. Uh, once again, no stray wires, no frays, nothing like that. Um, nothing that could touch any kind of a metal, metal contact and ground out or anything along those lines. So once we've taken a look at that, we kind of can uh, start things off from there. Uh, we'll want to go ahead and while still keeping the amp off, make sure that all of our volumes are turned down. All of our inputs are turned down. If we have those all turned up, uh, that can sometimes what's called raise the noise floor of the system, which can lead to some buzzes and some hums that you won't have otherwise. So make sure and keep those turned down. From there, uh, I've got, I'm going to start off with my master volume all the way down. Um, once I see that, I'm going to go ahead and power on. The first thing you should see when you power on your amplifier is that you have a power light. Whatever that amplifier may be, there's almost always going to be a power light on the front. We also want to make sure that we don't have any fault or protect lights or clip lights or anything that's on when it shouldn't be. So we, right now, all our knobs are down. We got a green light, no other lights flashing. We're still looking good here. So from here, we want to go ahead and gently test the system. Um, I normally like to use something that's just kind of constant and steady. Uh, something like white noise or pink noise or like a 1K test tone. Uh, I'm going to use uh, white noise in this case that I've Bluetoothed into the mixer. So uh, at this point, what I'm going to do is basically start to turn up the volume gradually. Yep, start very gradually. And I notice I start to hear sound through the speaker. Uh, in this particular case, I'm actually Bluetoothing into the media player that does not have an input uh, dial. But if it did, what I would essentially do in this case is set the amplifier somewhere on the master volume, somewhere between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock, and then slowly turn up your input volume. Uh, we don't want to have master volume pegged all the way over. We don't want to have our input pegged all the way over when testing this initially. Uh, we want to first make sure that you know, we have signal showing up to the right speakers. So now that we have this going on, you want to walk in front of your speaker, make sure it sounds correct. Um, once you're sure you have signal at all of your speakers, at this point, I normally go back, turn, on, turn off the amplifier. Once you've confirmed that you have signal at every location. At this point, this is when I normally turn on music um, and so that I can actually hear the uh, audio performance of the speaker. Um, and at this point, we want to go and listen to all the speakers. Do they sound correct? Do they sound the way we want them to? Are we pleased and happy with things? Uh, in a perfect world, the answer would be yes, and then we're done with this process. And we've now success successfully tested the system and we're ready to set the volumes to the appropriate levels, making sure we don't see any clip or protect lights. Uh, if, however, we do have an issue, now is where we start the troubleshooting steps. All right, so now that we're gonna start troubleshooting our system, the first thing we wanna do is just like we did um, before testing the system, start off with visual inspection. Look at the amplifier. Does everything look right? You know, are the, the wires in the right place? Did anything come disconnected? Look at the speaker. Does everything look right? At this point, we may also have volume controls tied in. Uh, is the volume control right side up? Because if the volume control is installed uh, the wrong way, then it may be not necessarily on the position where you think it is. So, because uh, there is an off position on almost all 70 volt uh, volume controls. Uh, so first, we just want to look at everything. We want to make sure, do we have good connections on the Euro blocks, on the speakers? Um, because if you just get signal to the first speaker in line and aren't hearing any further, maybe that that connection didn't happen somewhere down the line. So visual inspection first to double check everything, which leads us to our next step. Verify the power supply. Let's make sure we have power at the amplifier. If we don't have power, we're obviously not going to get any signal. 
Um, from there, once again, we're going to double check our speaker connections, not just visually, but also maybe a good time to unplug the Euroblock connectors, double check that the wires are still in there, that nothing's come disconnected. Um, and that's a good way to, uh, to make sure that there is good solid connection at the speakers. Um, we now have another option of a step that not everyone has to do, but can be very useful if you have any electrical experience or handyman type experience. So we can use our multimeter to check that we have uh, electrical signal at each of the uh, speakers and actually each of the positions, including the uh, volume control, if you have one in line. Um, from there, if you still haven't found the issue, we may want to test individual speakers. We can do that by actually bypassing previous speakers in line. Um, the signal connection from the amplifier to multiple daisy chain 70 volt speakers is going to be in parallel as we covered in another video. So that means that um, you quite simply can disconnect from one speaker and connect the wires to actually bypass one speaker to, so that we can individu individually bypass individual speakers um, and actually hear you know, where the signal is uh, breaking, where are we losing signal that may be causing issues along the lines. Um, it's also a good idea at that point um, to be listening. If, if, say, we're hearing a buzz or a rattling on a particular speaker, we want to listen individually to those speakers to see, does the issue persist for all of them or just an individual speaker? Um, at that point, we also want to double check the transformer taps. As we know from other discussions and uh, conversations and other videos, there is a dial on the back of most 70 volt speakers, or it may be color coded leads, but that determines how much wattage the speaker itself is actually getting. So by checking that, we may be able to determine, oh, this speaker is quiet. Why is it quiet? Is it getting the right amount of wattage? If not, maybe you need to pull out the flathead screwdriver and adjust the transformer tap on that speaker, either on the front or the back, um, or the wrong multicolored lead. Um, from there, if it doesn't appear that anything is wrong with any of the speakers, now we may need to look harder at the amplifier. Once again, we may need to get out the uh, multimeter in this case uh, to double check the amplifier, uh, or we may need to dive in a little bit deeper as to what issues could be um, coming from the amplifier that are causing this. So. Um, some common issues that you may run across that lead to going into some of these steps is either no sound, which no sound means do we have power at the amplifier, do we have good connections, uh, distorted sound, are all our volumes turned up too high, are we overdriving the amplifier, are we seeing clip, um, do we have uneven volume, that's another possible issue, is that because of transformer taps, because of poor wiring connections, um, we may need to look into those options. We could also run into an issue of a speaker hum or a speaker buzz. Are we using the right kind of speaker wire? Are we using side-by-side -side speaker wire when we need to be using twisted pair? Twisted pair is better for uh, rejecting electromagnetic interference, which is uh, sometimes an issue if you got a lot of uh, fluorescent lights, neon lights in a retail store or a um, hospitality type establishment. Um, that can be a very common issue. Um, so we have some ways that we need to uh, troubleshoot uh, speaker buzz or hum. Also, sometimes that hum can be isolated to whatever's plugged in into some of these inputs. So that's something we need to explore as well. Um, finally, you might also run into intermittent sound. Uh, sound keeps shutting off. Is our power cable loose? Is the speaker wire loose? Those are just some of the possible issues that can pop up. And let us know if we can help. Take care.